Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about the cloud service models. The NIST define three service models of how cloud services can be offered in the same document that I was talking about earlier when we were talking about the cloud characteristics. So the three service models are IaaS, which is infrastructure as a service, PaaS, which is platform as a service, and SaaS, which is software as a service. And I'll cover what the three of them are and how they differ from each other in this lecture. Large cloud service providers will offer multiple models, not just one. So the small providers might specialize in just one, just offer that, but large providers like Amazon Web Services and IBM, etc., will offer all three. The three models define where the customer and provider areas of responsibility are and at what level the customer gains access. And the three models build on top of one another. You'll see how that works as, you, as we see the slides. So for figuring out where the customer and provider responsibility is, we need to understand what the different levels are first. So let's look at the data center stack. Down at the bottom, we've got the actual facility, which is the building, the power, and the cooling, and security staff, etc. On top of that, we've got the network infrastructure hardware. Then we've got the storage infrastructure hardware, the compute hardware, which is the physical servers. Then we've got the hypervisor, which is the software that runs on top of those physical servers. On top of the hypervisor, we've got the virtual machine operating systems. Then we've got the applications. And then finally, we've got the data. So where is the, the, the line of where it is the provider responsibility and where it is the customer responsibility? Well, if you've got your own on-premises solution, obviously there is no provider, it's just you. So you looking at it from the point of view of you're a customer, you're going to be managing everything, obviously, with an on-premises solution. And that's not a cloud solution. With a Colo solution, the provider is going to provide the facility, and there's going to be a bit of a mix between whose responsibility it is for the network layer. The provider is going to provide incoming network connections you'll have your own network infrastructure equipment in there, like you'll have your own firewalls, et cetera. So some of that is the provider, some of it is you. Everything on top of the facility and the network is going to be your responsibility. So with on-premises and Colo solutions, you buy, own, and maintain all of your infrastructure hardware. You buy that as an upfront CapEx cost. Again, on-premises and Colo are not cloud solutions. Let's look at the cloud solutions. An infrastructure as a service offering, with this, the provider is providing the facility. They're providing all of the underlying hardware infrastructure as well. So the network infrastructure, all of the routers, all of the switches is going to be provided, owned, and managed by the provider. The same for the storage infrastructure and the compute hardware as well. The hypervisor will also be owned and maintained by the service provider. Now, there can be a bit of a gray area here. It is possible with some providers that you can install and manage your own hypervisor. As far as the CCNA exam is concerned, if you get a question about this, then the hypervisor is the provider responsibility. Everything on top of the hypervisor, so the operating system, the applications, and the data is going to be installed and managed by the customer. And 
the customer gets access at the operating system level. So let's see how this works. I'll go back on to Amazon Web Services. You remember from the earlier lecture in this section where I showed you how to provision a new virtual machine. Now let's look at how I would actually access that virtual machine once it is up and running. So I can see here's my instance here. I can click on the connect button and from in there, I can get the connection information, including a remote desktop file. So I've already downloaded that to my downloads folder. So I'll go there now and I'll open up this RDP connection to my virtual machine and put my password in there. And it's going to open up this RDP connection and you're going to see that I'm going to get in to the desktop on this Windows Server 2012 virtual machine that I provisioned earlier. And what I can do now is I can go and install my own applications. I can save my own data on here. I can configure the server however I want it to be configured. So with IaaS, the provider is providing the underlying infrastructure. That's why it's called infrastructure as a service. I get in at the desktop level in the operating system and I can configure and manage everything upwards from there. Okay, let's go back onto the slides. So the next one to cover is platform as a service, which goes up one level. So if we go back a slide with infrastructure as a service, customer gets in at the operating system level and it's operating system level and above, which is managed by the customer. With platform as a service, the operating system is managed by the provider and it's the applications and data that are managed by the customer. This doesn't really tell the whole story though. So this slide here, if you get asked anything on the exam, this is how platform as a service works, but it's easier if we look at it like this. So with platform as a service, it's typically used for developing software and the provider will provide a custom environment that it makes it easy for your developers to develop software in there. So all of the underlying infrastructure is managed by the provider. As a customer, you don't see that at all. Also, the operating system is managed by the provider. You get in at a custom environment level, which is purpose built for building applications. You can build your applications on there and then you can manage your own data as the customer. So let's have a look at an example of that. And I will go back to my web browser and let's look in another tab at IBM here. And you can see that IBM also offer infrastructure as a service offerings. One way that they differentiate from AWS is they don't just offer virtual servers, they offer bare metal dedicated servers as well. If you look further down at the Bluemix platform offerings, these are platform as a service. So if you look at the Cloud Foundry apps, you see that you can get into this purpose-built environment for Python, for Ruby, etc., and you can develop your own applications in there. A benefit you can get from that, this, if we look back at that e-commerce application we've been using throughout this section, let's say that you need to develop that e-commerce application. Well, if you use platform as a service, usually it's going to have plugins there that you can pull into your own application, like plugins for e-commerce, like payment systems and things like that. So rather than you having to write the entire code from scratch, you get into this custom environment and you can pull pieces of code in to build your own applications and that accelerates the process of doing so. So that is platform as a service. Of the three types, platform as a service is probably the least well known and the least used. So we've covered IAS and PAAS. That leaves the last one, which is software as a service. With software as a service, this is really the opposite of on-premises where the provider is managing everything. Provider manages all the way from the facility all the way up to the data. An example of software as a service would be something like 
Microsoft Office 365. So, you know, you can install Office programs like Word and Excel on your own laptop and run it from there. You can also run it in the cloud as well. So rather than installing anything on your laptop, you can connect over your interconnect, internet connection through a web browser and you can, man you can access all of your Office applications from there. Other examples of software as a service would be salesforce.com, things like that. So it's where you access the software directly from a web portal rather than having to install and manage it yourself. Okay, so those were the different cloud offerings and you get access at the application level with software as a service. That was the last slide for this lecture. So see you in the next one for some more cloud. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.